I'm in chapter two. Let's begin our reading this morning in verse 17. As always, thank you uh, for joining me this morning. I'm in chapter two. Let's begin reading at verse 17. The Bible says, but if you bear the name Jew and rely upon the law and boast in God and know his will and approve the things that are essential, being instructed out of the law and are confident that you, you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of the immature, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and of the truth, you, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that one shall not steal, do you steal? You who say that, that one shouldn't commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? And you who boast in the law through your breaking the law, do you dishonor God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, just as it is written. For indeed, circumcision is of value if you practice the law, but if you're a transgressor of the law, your circumcision has become an uncircumcision. So if the uncircumcised man keeps the requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? And he who is physically uncircumcised, if he keeps the law, will he not judge you who through having the letter of the law and circumcision or a transgressor of the law? For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he, but he is a Jew who is, in, who is one inwardly. And circumcision is that which is of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter. And his praise is not for men but from God. A lot here uh, for us to consider this morning, but I think very much uh, relevant for us as members of the Lord's body. You know, the Jews were, were, were blessed. They were God's chosen people. In the, in the latter part of our reading yesterday, Paul talked about how while the Gentiles didn't have God's written law, um, for many, God's laws were written on their hearts. They were desiring after God. The Jews, on the other hand, blessed with God's written law. Well, they weren't keeping the law. They were, weren't seeking after God. You know, the Jews, it seems, felt a sense of security as God's chosen people. They knew the will of God. They were blessed, right? As a result, they were to be a guide uh, to the blind, to instruct uh, the foolish. They were to teach the Gentiles, to be an example to the Gentiles. But they didn't do it. Um, I want you to listen to the problem again in verse 21. This is a, a picture of hypocrisy. You, therefore, you who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that one shouldn't steal, you, do you steal? You, you say that one shouldn't commit adultery. You commit adultery. You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You boast in the law that through your breaking of the law, do you dishonor God? It's the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. It's written. They were hypocrites that liked to hear themselves talk. They liked to tell others what to do, but not actually do it themselves. And as a result of this hypocrisy, they didn't honor God. In fact, as those who were supposed to belong to God, they blasphemed the name of God. You know, for the rest of the chapter, Paul reminds these hypocritical Jews of what it truly meant to belong to God. For the Jews, circumcision was a sign of the covenant, one they took great pride in, being circumcised. The problem, as the supposed people of the covenant, as the circumcision was to indicate, they didn't keep the law. On the other hand, those who are not of circumcision, he said, they, if they keep the law, Paul said, who's right with God? The true Jew, so to speak, is the one who keeps the law. The point of all of this is simple. Being pleasing to God is not about appearances. It's not about show. To truly belong to God, to be his people, it's the man or woman whose heart has been changed. This new heart is one who seeks after God, strives, strives to please God, not themselves, not other people. You know, brethren, when you put all of this together, these Jews by flesh should have been ashamed of themselves, blessed with so many advantages. They, they could have helped so many people see the true glory of God. They could have proven uh, to the world that God's way was, was best. Instead, they left the outside world with the wrong impression of God most of the time, to the point, by way of pleasing to God, some of these Gentiles with little to no access to God's written law, they were more pleasing to God than these Jews, and that was shameful. Brethren, how many of us have been blessed with great advantages. You know, so many of us were, were born into families who were God-fearing Christians, and they taught us the truth from an early age, and we didn't have to even hardly seek the truth. It was spoon-fed to us from an early age, and you talk about an advantage. So my question becomes to people like me and you possibly, what are we doing with these great advantages? You know, I wonder if God sometimes, if he doesn't think to himself, you know, I have blessed Justin with, with all of these advantages, godly parents, um, godly grandparents, godly aunt, aunts and uncles, just surrounded by godliness. God's word, a prevalent part uh, of my life growing up. And then we've got this other fellow over here. He wasn't blessed with any of that. Didn't grow up under the tutelage of great Bible teachers. But even so, Justin's neighbor, how about this? He's kinder, shows more patience with others, is 
shows more love for his fellow man than, than Justin does. He's a better steward of, of my blessings, God says, than Justin is. You know, brother, those of us who've been blessed through God's providence, someone loved us enough to give us the truth of the gospel, to teach us the truth. As those with great advantages, what are we doing with it? You know, this is the idea of stewardship, right? Are we glorifying God with the advantages he has blessed us with? Or are we guilty like these Jews of, we proclaim one thing but do another? We, we condemn the world for, for the same things that we do possibly. And this hypocrisy, it, it rubs people the wrong way, kills the influence of the church. But then let's not be hypocrites. Let's not condemn the world but turn around and practice the very same things we condemn others for. You know, being pleasing to God and pleasing man are two very different things. Here's the question. What are we most interested in? God pleasing or man pleasing? Something to think about, right? Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, thank you for your word, Father. Daily, it calls us to think and to consider, to examine our own lives. Father, we recognize that the sin of hypocrisy, it's easy. It's easy to get caught up into this world, Father, as you know, and to to worry more about what we look like as opposed to what we are. To worry more about what people think of us as to what you think of us, Father. And help us to be courageous and understand, Father, that, that you are the audience that, that we should be concerned with. As a God who's blessed us so richly, Father, give us the courage to use those blessings, to glorify you, to show the world that your way is better. And Father, may we always be authentic in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay.